Huckleberry Finn and Jim down the Mississippi River, separating the two runaway escapade fugitives. Huck meets up with the Granger Fords. The Granger Fords assume themselves that Huck is not a shepherd's son and then assign him to the care of their son Buck. The boys return to Buck's room, whereupon Buck promptly asks, asks Huck where Moses was when the candlelight went out. Where Moses was when the candlelight went out. So it was like this. When we got upstairs to his room, he got me a coarse shirt and a roundabout and pants of these and I put them on. While I was at it, he asked me what my name was, but before I could tell him, he started to telling me about a blue jay and a young rabbit he had catched in the woods day before yesterday, and he asked me where Moses was when the candle went out. I said, I didn't know. I hadn't heard about it before. No way. Well, guess, he says. How am I going to guess, says I, when I never heard tell about it before? But you can guess, can't you? It's just as easy. Which candle, says I. Why, why, any candle, he says. I don't know where he was, says I. Where was he? Why, he was in the dark. That's where he was. Well, if you knowed where he was, why did you ask me for? Why blame it? It's a riddle, don't you see? Say, how long are you going to stay here? You got to stay always like this. We can, we can just have booming times. They don't have no school now. Do you own a dog? I've got a dog and he will go in the river and bring out chips that you throw in. Do you like to comb up Sundays and all that kind of foolishness? You bet, I don't. But Ma, she makes me confound these old, old breeches. I reckon I would better put them on, but I would rather not. It's so warm. Are you all ready? All right, come along. Old horse. As do many scenes in the adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, this exchange displays Huck's ignorance of his culture and the conventions. Huck understandably believes that Buck's question concerns Moses' whereabouts. And when the candle goes out, not lightning, condition in staking anyone stumped by a riddle until hearing the punchline, Huck, however, is unfamiliar with the category of the riddle and does not realize he has heard one even when Bucks delivers the punchline. Huck, therefore, cannot fathom the point of Bucks' question. Why would Buck inquire where Moses was if he already knows? Well, blame it, Huck, it's a riddle. Riddles are not meant to elicit information, although having the form of a question, riddles are a different act, kind of speech act, a demonstration, a claim, and a reassurance. We have here annotations and bibliography from my repository. Cloud means to cultivate, farrow, harrow, cannon, and even lurch, stumped, buff, baffle, and bewilder, and bemaze, and confound, and mystify. Punchline, the final phrase, or the storyline of a sent the sentence of a joke or story, providing the humor or other crucial elements. Conceive. Devise and invent and create and formulate and frame and develop and coin and evolve or even to design, elicit, evoke and extract, to generate, excite and kindle, induce and engender.
riddles, like most jokes, are signs that speaker is able to manipulate the context in which specific words refer. Telling this riddle which shifts the references of the event where from a place to a condition this place to buck his command of linguistic conventions. The act reminds him that he is culturally literate. No doubt, Huck's ignorance, it is necessary to this effect as the audience's response to a riddle always is. The audience shares the joke even when the were perhaps because it did not guess the specific punchline for, for the joke really concerns the ability of members of a community to negotiate and adapt its conventions. Hawk, of course, is a frustrating audience. He is irritated by Buck's riddle because he cannot conceive of a question not meant to to elicit information to him a speech the act taking the form of a quotation question can function only as a question Bach is in turn literally irrita initially irritated by Huck's response but he straight away uses in Huck's bafflement an opportunity to instruct Huck in how to be a boy so the bafflement Huck was really confounded and mystified and stumped and bemused and bewildered and baffled by Huckleberry Finn's initial response. Buck teaches by displaying his own competence. In adolescence, he insists that Huck stay out forever and join him in not attending school in appreciating how well he has trained his dog to fetch in not combing up so on sundays and in finding ways to avoid wearing breeches huck's apparent ignorance makes him finally an ideal audience for buck's self-performance and the revelations between Huck and Buck in this episode are invidious and didactic. They are indeed disciplinary, as we now use the word following which and um, this proclamation procedures of individualization which act. The modes by which human beings are made subjects, the scene of instru instruction following Buck's riddle, helps proceed, produce the subjectivity of both the boys. Hug the novitiate receives a lesson in the range of ex expectations he should bring to future linguistic exchange and does in his basic experience of himself. Correspondingly, Buck receives and confirms his scene of himself by envisioning further instruction of Huck. The episode represents producing production of subjectivity as well as specifically literary. Huck must be instructed and Buck must anticipate himself instructing Huck in how to apprehend riddles which is to say, how to apprehend riddles, which is to say, how to expl exploit linguistic context. The other activities in Buck foresees instructing Huck are likewise in interpretive concerning when formal attire can be eschewed and how animals respond to sounds and gestures. And the annotations and bibliography, breeches, short trousers, fastened just below the knee, now chiefly worn as a part of riding or ceremonial dress. 
ambiguous an action or a situation likely to arouse resentment and anger in others didactic disciplinary dogmatic educational philosophy ideologic moralizing philosophizing philosophizing pedagogy and scholastic as well as academic or informational novitiate Novitiate, apprenticeship, training, and probation, traineeship. Well, we have envisioning, envisage, envisage, and imaginary visualizing, seeing one's mind's eyes, conjure, assure, assure, deliberately avoiding something, reprimand, rebuff, repudiate, forego, abdicate. Abjuration, abstain from, and uh, um, disclaim and disavowal. So far, so on, and so forth. We have come. This exchange is utterly typical of Huckleberry Finn. The instruction Huck continuously receives in how to conduct himself tends to be instruction in what we should call literary discipline. To be civilized, Huck must learn to await prayer before a meal and to recognize that prayers are just crumbling about the quality of the food or as he initially thinks, and he must learn that meals consist of separate portions without all the ingredients cooked together, whether Huck in, endorses much distinctions, he must recognize them. These are symbolic instances of literacy, but the novel is full of other obvious forms. Huck must learn when and how to pray. Huck thinks one prays for useful items like fishing equipment. When US dollar one can stand for US dollar six thousand, the fiction by which Judge Thatcher protects Huck's reward money for PAP. How to regard literary figures like the Court of Monte Cristo and how to interpret ghost stories and dreams and signs like the presence of rattle skins, snake skins, and how to interpret and indeed use the texts in the, the adventure books and the history books and Shakespeare and drama, sentimental poetry and the Bible. Characters in the novel, like most of the rest of us, understand themselves largely through the way that they apprehend such narratives and more generally experience signs. As we see in the episodes concerning Bach's widow, there is thematic constitution, aesthetic constitution of the self envisioning and envisage structures and evolves to social interactions. Mark Twain parodies the, con the condition of identifying in Tom Sawyer's recycles of adventure stories, his adherence to his authorities, especially in the ch closing chapters, when in the name of adventure and style, Tom subjects unconscionable cruelty. Nevertheless, Mark Twain offers no obvious alternative to literary discipline. When Huck debates with himself in chapter 31 whether to rescue Jim or to inform Miss Watson of what he does so wholly within the frame, for the two most prominent societal narratives in the novel, the Bible and slavery. Huck's exclamation about going to hell when he learns of tears of his letters to Miss Watson, to, uh, followed by his determination instead to steal Jean out of slavery again, indicates how deeply he internalized community's interpretation of scriptures and of civil property rights. We have here annotations and bibliography aesthetic relating to the enjoyment and appreciation of beauty as a movement, adherence, attachment and commitment to a prison, cause and a belief. Unconscionable, unjustifiable, exhorted, uh, exhortable, and, and unethical, immoral, immoral, monstrous and grueling and gross, preposterous and outrageous and wrong and inordinate. Such ideas and numerous others so frame Huck's themes, episodes, 
experiences himself that he reaffirms and reasserts their premises even as he disobeys them. Even the action that intimates the novel's narrative of lib liberation setting, Huck on the River, to escape, it often says, that confirms the convention while Jean escapes slavery, exemplifies literary discipline. When Huck flees Cap's brutal regime by laying down in a canoe and setting it afloat downriver, he is reenacting Moses' salvation. Despite having earlier skepticism of the story of Moses and the bulrushes, because he don't take stock into dead people. Huck has so deeply internalized as at this parable that he restages it unconsciously. Annotations and bibliography reenacting means to acting out of a past event retrospection. Skepticism, doubtful and pinch salt, lacking of conviction. Parable, a allegorizing fable, moral tale, and moral story, or an exemplum. Exemplum, allegory, parable, and fable, moral story, moral tale. And a simple story which was used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. These novels' tendency evinces the interpretive character of subjectivization and anticipates the controversy that has consistently surrounded it. Contemporary scholars still follow Lionel Trilling in asking whether this novel reinforces or frees readers from the hold of Huckleberry Finn, of convention, of values, which have been internalized, and I have thus far been suggesting as a moral general form of this question, what is the nature and effect of literary discipline? So the phrasing of the author here may be sound to presciently post-structuralist, but it was precisely the one Mark Twain's contemporaries raised about the function of study, literary studies emerged as formal 19th century discipline. Advocates of, uh, of modern and scientific literary, literary studies have established the Modern Language Association in 1883 proclaimed that this main subjective objective was to produce a particular kind of a reader, that they would cultivate in students what they call mental discipline or literary discipline. Readers possessed of mental discipline would be better civil citizens because they would be freed from the dominion of habit and culture, of convention and dogma, and if contemporary debates about Huckleberry Finn reinforces and reformulates this ideal in a different tone and idiom, the novel itself repudiates as ludicrously impossible, albeit indisputable, discipline enslaves, Twain believed, and his modern readers agree, but the only condition that might qualify as freedom is a laughable fantasy. Annotations and bibliography, presence, foreshadowing, forecasting, foretelling, recognition, and prophesizing, foreseeing, foresightedness, foresight, repudiation, abjure, and abnegation, disclaim, disavowal, rebuff, vindication, renounce, Albeit conjunction through he was making progress, albeit rather slowly. Gratitude and thanksgiving and farewell.